time. I'm Katie Wayne and today we're at Rowan Elementary School. We'll be reading books with buttons. Are you ready for an adventure in reading? Me too. Come on, let's read. Today we're going to read stories with buttons. <laughs> Did you ever think there would be stories about or with buttons? Yeah. Let's start with this one. Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons by Eric Litwin. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three. Three. Four minus one equals three. Did Pete cry? No. Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Two. two. Three minus one equals two. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One! Two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button. My button, my button, my one groovy button. Pop. Oh, no. The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero. One minus one equals zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? His belly button, and he kept on singing his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? No. Goodness, no. We keep on singing. Buttons come and buttons go. The end. Stand up. We're going to sing that song. Yeah. Yeah. So we have how many buttons to begin with? Four. Okay, so we're going to count down, and then of course we're going to get to our last button. All right, are you ready? Okay. My button, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. <gasps> One pops off. How many are left? Three. So let's sing about our three buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. One pops off. How many are left? Two. Let's sing. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. One pops off. How many is left? One. Do we cry? No. Goodness, no. no. Buttons come and, and buttons, buttons go. Ready? Let's sing. 
My button, my button, my one groovy button, my button, my button, my one groovy button. <gasps> that button pops off. Now many, how many are left? Zero. Do we cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Because we still have one button, right? Our you ready to sing? Yeah. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. Very good. Have a seat. Buttons by Brock Cole. Once there was an old man who ate so much his britches burst and his buttons popped off. One, two, three, into the fire. Wife, wife, he cried, we are undone. My britches have burst and my buttons are burnt, every one. His wife helped him to bed and then went to find their three daughters. Children, she said, a terrible thing has happened. Your father has burst his britches and his buttons are burnt front and back. Everyone, what are we to do? The three girls rolled their eyes at the ceiling and thought and thought. The eldest, a slender beauty, spoke first. I know not what course my sisters may choose, she said, but I shall dress in my finest clothes and walk up and down the palace bridge. Surely a rich man will fall in love with me and ask me to be his wife, but I will say, no, I can never be yours, not unless you first give me all of your buttons. An excellent plan, cried her mother. Come to my arms, my precious child. Then the second daughter spoke up. She was tall and strong and had bright red cheeks. Mother, she said, I don't know what little sister will do, but I shall dress as a boy and join the army. Surely you have noticed that a soldier's uniform has many, many buttons. I have no doubt I shall be able to spare two or three for father. What a splendid idea. Let me embrace you as well, my darling girl, she cried, and then waited expectantly to hear what her youngest daughter might suggest. Well, this girl couldn't think of a thing. She was young and rabbity and still picked her nose when she thought no one was looking. How could she come up with the plan as wonderful as those of her sisters? Still, she screwed up her eyes and twisted her fingers until they hurt. I know what I will do, she said finally. I will run in the meadows along the river and I will hold my apron out so that if any buttons should fall from the sky, I will catch them before they get lost in the tall grass. Very good, said her mother and gave her a pat. Privately, the old woman had her doubts, but since her older girls had such marvelous ideas, it hardly seemed to matter what the youngest did. And so the eldest daughter dressed up in her finest robe and jewels, and the second put on a boy's rough jacket and leather breeches, and the youngest let off her shoes and stockings and ran in the meadow along the river. And now we shall hear what happened to them all. The eldest daughter had not walked to and fro upon the bridge for 20 minutes when suddenly a band of ruffians set upon her. They tore her gown and stole her purse and tipped her over the balustrade so that she fell head first down, down into the river below. It might have been all up for her but a handsome young bargee pulled her from the water just as she was about to drown. When he saw how beautiful she was, even with duckweed in her hair and her clothes all torn, he fell in love at once. 
Will you be my wife, he said. I'm going on a long voyage through many countries to my home in Cologne and must have you by my side or expire of a broken heart. Please say you'll be mine. All right, said the oldest daughter. It seemed only decent under the circumstances. She and the bargee were married at once by the captain of a passing sightseeing boat and in no time at all were on their way down the river. The eldest daughter was very happy with her new husband and it was only when they were in sight of Cologne's cathedral spires that she remembered that she had married him without demanding a single button. No, not even something naggly made of bone. Oh, bother, she thought. What's done is done and can't be undone. She decided she would send her father a postcard instead. The second sister joined the army just as she had resolved, but no sooner had she put on her fine uniform with 60 gold buttons up and down the front and at the sleeves and on her trousers and footies, that there came a report that the country was besieged. Her regiment was ordered to the front at once. What a battle there was! Cannons roared and sabers clashed. Musket shot hummed through the air like a million angry bees. Was it the brave young ensign falling senseless from his horse? Yes, it was. The second sister caught the ensign in her strong arms and carried him to the safety of a nearby cowshed. He was wounded, a flesh wound only, but it bled profusely. At once the girl tore off her jacket and made bandages from her shirt tails. Many buttons were lost and destroyed in the process, but who could think of buttons at a time like this? When the young ensign came to his senses, the first thing he saw was a golden-haired young woman bending over him, her eyes filled with concern. What goddess is this, he thought, that holds me in her arms? Surely I have died and gone to paradise. But no, it was only the second sister, who wept tears of joy to see him recovering. For her, too, it had been love at first sight. That night the young couple lay snug in the straw and made plans for their future together as sounds of battle faded farther and farther away. They talked of many silly things, babies and cottages and birds and nests, but not once did anyone mention buttons. No, not once. I shall write to Papa, said the girl in the morning, a letter or something. In the meantime, the youngest sister went every day to the meadow by the river and ran to and from in the long grass her apron held out before her. She was her father's last hope, had he but known. Running is good exercise, and soon his young daughter grew strong and sturdy, so she was not as unhappy as she might have been, for the truth is that not a single button fell into her apron. No, not even a cufflink. It was enough to discourage a saint, but still, she got up every morning and did her best. For isn't it written somewhere that if at first you don't succeed, try and try again? There's no telling how long she might have gone on, but one day, a young cowherd who brought his beast down to the water morning and night stopped to watch her. At first, he was merely puzzled by her antics. But then he grew to love the way her brown legs flashed through the green grass. He watched her every day for a week, and then on Sunday evening, plucked up his courage and called to her as she cantered by. Pray, love, what are you doing? Running back and forth like that with your skirts a-flying and your apron all billowy. The youngest sister was quite out of breath and was glad to stop and talk for a minute. She told him of her task and how hard she was trying. And how many buttons have you got so far? asked the young cowherd. Not one, not even one of those cheap wooden ones off an old overcoat. I don't think there are any buttons in the sky at all, she said and sat down on the bank of Crown Vetch to cry a bit with her pretty brown feet stretched out before her. Don't cry, love, said the young cowherd. 
listen to me. Tomorrow morning, why don't you try running underneath that old oak tree in the center of the meadow? I understand there's a frequent fall of buttons there. Really? said the youngest sister, hardly daring to hope. Really? Last week, there was a veritable hailstorm of brass shirt studs right beneath the place where the leaves are thickest. Well, he had such a way with words that the girl couldn't help but believe him. So the next morning, she did as he told her and ran round and round under the old oak. And what do you think? Just as she ran under the thickest cluster of leaves, down fell a set of used trouser buttons into her apron. Do you see the hand? Who could describe the joy which greeted her when she returned home? Her mother sewed the buttons immediately onto her father's breeches, and the old man capered about like a child so glad he was to be out of bed once more. And when their daughter told them of the young cowherd who had helped and advised her, what could they say? They said nothing would be too good for such a wise young man, which is exactly what the girl thought, too. That evening, when he brought the beast to water. There she was, sitting in the crown vetch with a chain of daisies around her head. Why, love, did you get your buttons? He asked. Yes, I did, and all because of you, how can I ever repay you? The poor girl was willing to give him everything she possessed, but even then, she said, couldn't possibly be enough. I don't know, said the cowherd. Perhaps we should get married, for it is often said that between a husband and wife there are, can be no debts, but we must share all and all together. Yes, that must be right. We should get married at once, said the girl, and they kissed rapturously. <laughs> and here is a picture of their wedding party. There is the bride's father and mother. Doesn't he look proud with all his buttons done up? And look at that. The eldest sister has come back from Cologne for the occasion with her bargy husband. There they are with their new baby. Don't they look happy together? And there is the sister with the bold ensign. Aren't they a handsome couple? Why, they look strong enough to win a war all by themselves. But of course, no one is as beautiful as a bride. There she is right in the middle of the picture. And the clever cowherd? Well, he is very good looking too. That's him next to her with his trousers tied up with a bit of string. He doesn't seem to have enough buttons, but she doesn't care. It's a small fault and seems to run in the family. The end. Such a silly story. Well, thank you so much for being such good listeners of my books with buttons. Today we'll make a mixed media fish tank with buttons. Let me show you what we'll need. We'll need a piece of blue construction paper, a piece of brown strip that could be construction paper or a paper bag. We'll need some Google eyes. You'll need one for every fish. You'll need some buttons. I'm using six, but you could use more or less. And we need a triangle of construction paper to coordinate with those buttons in color. And then we need some kind of round sticker. These are pearl stickers, but if you just had any kind of circle sticker, that would work. We need a black marker, a green dauber paint, and some glue. Let's get started. So this is a great project for being creative. The first thing we're going to do, we're just going to slide some of our materials up to the top and I'm going to open up my glue and I'm going to put some glue right on my brown paper, just like that. I'm going to flip that over and put it right on the bottom of my fish tank, just like that. Spread that out. Great. The next thing I want to do is make some plants in my tank that my fish can swim around. So I'll push off these materials up to the side. 
and I'll get my dauber of paint, take off the lid, and all I'm gonna do is just daub it up in shapes and add to it. So here I go, not looking for a straight line, just kind of squiggly, adding in those dots, making some arms to the plant, making it thicker at top and thinner at the bottom. Just keep adding it till I like it. Then I'll do another one. Make this one go up a little higher. Maybe there's a branch off this way. Great. And another one off this side. Maybe thicker at the bottom. Maybe this one goes deeper into the tank. There. There's my second one. And I'm going to have a little one down here. Maybe not as big. Make sure there's connected from the base to the top. And that's all I need that for. Just a little bit of seaweed there. Now I'm going to put the fish together. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to decide where my fish is going to be. Put a bit of glue right there, a little circle. I need a little bit more for this one because this is a, a big fish with a big button. Put his tail in there. Face him down this way, headed toward the, tra to the, to the plant. And I can decide which way I want the holes on the button to go to decorate the fish, to have a different texture on the fish. I'm going to have these two swimming together, so I'll have them kind of close, not too close. Again, I'll put the tail down, add the button for the body right there, just like that. And let's have some yellow fish coming out from behind. Just like that. If I need a little more glue, no problem. Just put it on there. This glue dries clear, so it's okay if it gets a little too much. There we go. I'll put another fish down here. The tail down and the body on top, however you like it. And then we'll add the red fish. And maybe someone's way down on the bottom. So in addition to the tail, our fish needs some additional details. So I have different eyes that I'm going to put right on the button. And the eye should be toward the top. But still on the fish. There we go. Another big button. Maybe right here. And it's okay if it covers up the hole, if that's okay with you. It's your project for you to be creative with. Just keep adding the Google eyes onto each fish. Right. The last detail the fish needs on the fish are some mouths. So I have this marker and I've used two different kinds of mouths. One is just sort of a, a line right near the eye, just opposite of the tail, maybe a little bit lower. 
So we could do a couple of those or can make a circle because our fish are going to have some bubbles in a minute. So we can do a little bit of an O for the mouth. It is drawing right on the button. Okay. And the last detail is for the bubbles, and this is where the stickers come in. So you want to start one right near the mouth, and the bu bubbles will trail up. They'll have a little bit of space between them. Use three or four depending on how big your bubbles are. Starting at the mouth, maybe some of them popped before they got up to the top or ran into the plant. One last fish. So you'll want to let that dry because the fish um, need time to stick to the paper. When you're done, you have your fish tank, including buttons. Be creative. Most of all, have fun. Well, that's all the time we have today at Rowan Elementary School. Remember, if you'd like us to come to your school, ask your school librarian, your teacher, or your principal to contact us. See you next time. Bye-bye.